What is going on? In this video, we are gonna talk about how to increase your bench press. So if you have a poverty bench and you're looking for some tips, stick around because we are gonna drop some knowledge bombs. What's going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's End and I recently put a poll on Instagram asking what you guys wanted for the next video and the bench press uh, for the Grow series, which is the last couple of videos I've been putting out dealing with certain movements, how to get them stronger for strength versus hypertrophy. The bench one popped up and did pretty well. So we are gonna dive into that today. I'm gonna keep it very short, simple and to the point. Uh, but what I wanna cover in this video is gonna be the common problems uh, that I see when programming for the bench press. We're gonna go through really quick my favorite exercises for strength versus hypertrophy. And then we're gonna wrap it up with giving you guys a sample uh, programming uh, block that you guys can include in your training and hopefully you guys will get some better results and uh, move on past your plateau and get out of that poverty bench which you are stuck in. So without further ado, we got to head on over to the whiteboard. Yes. So here we are at the whiteboard with Coach Joe, and we are gonna to try to fix your bench press. And this is specifically gonna be talking about programming. Uh, I'm gonna kind of clear up some issues that I've noticed with myself in the past and a lot of the athletes that I've helped coach along the way. Uh, and hopefully this clears it up for you guys a little bit. Uh, but the first thing before we even get into this is you really have to understand your goals. Like, what are you training for? Do you wanna be a power lifter? Do you wanna be a strongman? Do you have a competition in 12 weeks? Are you trying to be a bodybuilder, right? These uh, goals are always gonna dictate the roadmap that we need to make for our programming. So have clear goals and you wanna to stick to that goal for whatever duration, but at least give it enough time so that you can have measurable progress and you're not just always coming in doing random things and you're changing your goals. Uh, because if it's switching too fast, you're not gonna be able to make the progress needed uh, to attain those goals, okay? So we need to stick to it and figure out the goals. All right, so diving into it. Uh, the common problems I see with bench pressing program, like I said, the first one is that they don't have uh, clear and concise goals. So you wanna make sure that you have clear and concise goals, uh, but then once you have that goal, the biggest thing that I have realized, the first one is gonna be that there's not enough volume. Uh, so typically people will just come in and maybe they'll just do heavy singles all the time or heavy doubles or triples, but we know that volume and causing that stress, which is gonna make us have to recover, is gonna force the adaptation. So you need to be making sure that you're getting enough volume in and that's where structured block programming is gonna come into play. So if you're having your strength blocks, okay, uh, you're gonna have lower volume typically, but during a hypertrophy phase, which I just got done doing, I've been running my hypertrophy program, which is phenomenal and kind of includes a lot of these uh, tips I'm gonna be talking about, um, has enough volume to then force the recovery and the strength adaptation that we're looking for. But if you guys are just going and maxing out all the time, or you're just doing heavy doubles, heavy triples without putting in solid work with lots of volume, and I'm talking anywhere from five to 10 to 12 reps uh, for an extended period of time, okay, then you're not gonna be able to get the muscles to grow and you're not gonna become stronger. So get that volume in. Uh, Second one is gonna be not enough frequency. So this was a big mistake that I had made when I was benching, is I only used to bench one time per week. And uh, my bench wasn't really going up and I was always wondering why the heck is my bench not going up? I was doing a good bit of volume uh, during that one day. However, I really started to notice that my bench gains were increasing once I was benching two, three, max was four days a week. Uh, my bench went from about 345 up to about 420 in a couple of years. So. Uh, increasing the volume and the frequency has been a really big help for me. So when we get to the programming part, I'm gonna give you guys a uh, frequency of about three days a week, and that can work for you. Uh, but you know, you wanna be anywhere between that, I would say at least two to four times per week with your bench press, especially if you're stuck that one time a week, I don't think it's gonna cut it. So frequency is gonna be huge. Uh, the other thing is, I think a lot of people don't focus on their weak points of their lifts. They focus on their strong, uh, suit and yes, you do want to do that. But if you're only one benching one time a week It's hard to do all that in the same time and making sure that you recover enough to be able to do that uh, and then uh, two they um, Don't ever work on the weak points So we want to make sure that we're focusing on those weak points and we're building them up through 
our programming and the variations that I'm gonna kind of lead into next. So these are just some big problems that stand out to me. Once again, I'm talking to the people who are having that bench plateau, kind of wondering what the next steps would be. So these are my top uh, suggestions for you. So now we're gonna dive into the next part. All right, so on my tip two, we're gonna go into my favorite movements or accessory movements for strength blocks that I have, and then hypertrophy blocks. So typically when I do my programming, I will run, uh, let's just say a GPP block for four to six weeks, then I'll go into a hypertrophy block, and then from there a strength block, and then depending if I have a competition or not, I'll kind of lead into a peak where I test or do that competition, then kind of restart that cycle all over again. If you don't have a competition, you can stay uh, within a hypertrophy or strength block for a good period of time, and then just kind of keep repeating those back and forth as well uh, if you don't have anything that's really coming up. So um, for strength, I put my three favorite movements and uh, total volume we want to shoot for per week is going to be anywhere from eight to 15 sets, okay, which is going to be a little bit less than volume okay, because we're focusing on strength. And you're going to have that rep range anywhere from about you know, five to eight reps is kind of where I stick for strength blocks. Uh, as we get lower and lower, we're kind of just getting more into just like the power and singles, uh, and that's gonna be more towards like a peak block, okay? Uh, so for the first one, it's definitely gonna be a close grip bench press, and especially uh, for someone who is in strongman, okay? You aren't ever gonna bench press necessarily in a competition, but having strong triceps is gonna carry over to a lot of the overhead events. So for me, doing close grip bench is gonna be awesome. Uh, for anyone who's not in strongman and they're doing uh, powerlifting meets, you wanna have a nice strong lockout. So close grip bench is gonna help strengthen those triceps, and it's just a great variation to have in for your bench press. Number two, it's gonna be pin bench. Uh, the reason I like pin bench is because it's gonna help focus on those weak points that I had talked about in the previous point. Uh, is that you can set the pins wherever you are having an issue with and typically uh, it's gonna help increase your bar path because you're gonna have to make sure that you're keeping a good bar path or else it's just gonna get stuck there and it's not very comfortable and you gotta move the bar. So it's gonna help with technique work as well. Uh, for me, sometimes I get stuck uh, just a couple inches off my chest so it's nice to set the pins at that specific point so I'm building a stronger uh, you know, movement pattern through the issue and the weak point that I have. So definitely try to work in pins if you can. If you don't have pins, another cool alternative maybe just be floor pressing. All right, it's gonna help as well. Uh, the last one is gonna be for my overload. So typically once a week, I have an overload style day. And overload just means you're using something that's gonna help you push past the maximum effort anywhere from five to 10%. Uh, so for me using a slingshot, the Mark Bell slingshot uh, has really helped with that overload day. You could use reverse bands or something like that, but essentially it's gonna help you handle a, high, or a heavier load than you normally could. We'll talk about that later on. All right, so for the hypertrophy, so this is if we're gonna be doing higher volume, all right, we're gonna be in the 10 to 20 sets per week, and we're just looking to put a lot of stress on the body so that we can force the recovery and then the adaptation, which is just gonna be literally growing our muscles bigger and bigger over time, okay? So my first one here is gonna be incline dumbbell or barbell bench. I really like throwing those into my hypertrophy blocks. I feel like it helps uh, actually with my overhead from off of my chest, and it just helps strengthen my triceps as well as my bench press, so it's got a nice carryover for a little bit of everything. Number two, it's gonna be a tempo bench. You could do with barbell or dumbbells, but you're gonna accumulate a lot of volume for each rep. So like I talked about in previous videos, you can do a three, zero, three, so three count down, and then a three count up, nice and smooth. You could do three down and then just press straight up. You could do four down, doesn't matter, you can play with it, uh, but basically it's gonna help auto-regulate uh, the intensity as well. Can't go as heavy during that day, so it's gonna really help force the volume and lighter weights to let me recover a little bit better with my training. Uh, number three, and this is kind of far away from the spectrum of specificity for me, uh, but I grew up, you know, a gym rat doing the bodybuilding style stuff, trying to get that pump, feel the burn in my chesticles, and I always really enjoyed any type of fly. So whether it was a cable fly or a dumbbell fly. So for some reason for me personally, like I said, these are all based on me personally. I really like doing cable flies or dumbbell flies. And typically I'll have that on like one of my later days in the week of training. So maybe like my third day or, or a third uh, chest or bench variation day. And I just put those in for the sake of just getting that pump and pure uh, hypertrophy and trying to drive as much volume as possible. So like I said, 10 to 20 sets. And these are kind of gonna be the variations that I play off of uh, in the next part. We're gonna give you guys a little bit of a sample programming block that you can run. Um, and hopefully it helps you with your training. So let's get into that now. All 
All right, guys, so this is gonna be the last part of the video where I give you guys a little bit of a sample of something you can try for a month and just see how it works for you in your bench press. Uh, we're gonna have it based off of a strength block, but you're also gonna have a little bit more volume depending on the bench variation for that day. So if you guys are used to uh, just only benching one time per week, this is gonna be getting in some sort of bench variation three times per week, which increases the volume and the frequency like we talked about all the way in part one. So typically I like to train four days a week. A fifth day would maybe just be skill work, but I don't really count that as a training day. So four days, and if you do only train three days a week, this will work exactly for you as well. Uh, but primarily we don't wanna train it, I would say less than three times per week. For day one, day one will be if you train Monday, Tuesday, say then Thursday, Friday, which is just what I do, or Monday, Wednesday, I don't know, Friday, Saturday, whatever works for you. You want your first day to be where you can put the most focus into after you've come off the most rest. So my main bench variation will be on that day. So if you are a power lifter, you have to have a pause on the chest. So it's gonna be your competition bench press. If you are a strong man, you can do whatever variation you want. Uh, typically it'll be like a touch and go for me, or maybe just a pause bench press just to help me get stronger in that position. But I don't really see that having much transfer over to strong man, so I don't do it that often. Uh, but you guys get the point. So I'm a big fan of RPE. If you don't know much about RPE, I can link it above where I talk about the difference of RPE versus percentages. And it's just a different way to uh, manage your stress and make sure that you're getting the stress you need uh, in order to cause the adaptation. So I'll do five reps at an RPE six, then five reps RPE seven, and then five reps at an RPE eight for two sets. Okay, so that's for day one. That's gonna be the strength movement. And you can have uh, other movements after this. This is just solely talking about the bench press, but after this, maybe I will do uh, you know a deadlift or something like that because I like to do full body splits, but that'll be how the day one will work. Now day two, easy way to think about it is focus on a weak point variation in your bench. So uh, for day two, this will probably be um, either on Tuesday for me or Thursday later in the week. Apples or oranges, you pick whatever you want to do. Uh, so the weak point variation could be close grip if you have weaker triceps that you're trying to get stronger or pin bench, okay? So uh, these are the two variations that maybe I would pick for myself. And for this, I'm gonna do a little bit more volume. I'm gonna do six reps at seven, six reps at eight, six reps at nine. And then we're gonna do a back off 10% uh, off that top set. So if I had a 225 pound bench, okay, I would take off 10% uh, of that. And then I'll just hit that for a set of six reps. This is a back off, okay? So for you guys, pick whatever is gonna be closest to your weak point variation, uh, where you notice you're getting stuck, that's gonna be there. Then at the end of the week, for day three, we're gonna do our overload variation or a higher volume uh, variation that's gonna require us to, to not stress our body as much, okay, which is gonna help manage fatigue in the long haul. So an overload uh, load variation for me would be a slingshot. So I'll do a slingshot bench press uh, or if I'm gonna do a higher volume, I'll probably do like a tempo dumbbell press or a tempo bench press. So I can't go as heavy. And if I do the overload variation, you have the assistance of something that's making it actually lighter or feel lighter than it actually is. So for that, I'll do eight at seven for four uh, sets. So eight reps, RPE seven for four sets across. And that's kind of the gist of uh, something that you guys can play with for your programming. If you wanna increase your bench press, uh, this isn't perfect, okay? There's a lot more that could be added to it. I try to keep it pretty simple. Doesn't matter really if you take your weak point variation or day three and you flop them, that's okay. Uh, but if you give this a shot maybe for a month and just see how it works and if your numbers are trending in a good way, you feel like you're getting better in, in those weak positions, you're adding more volume, more frequency, you're on the right path. And then after you stick to that for you know about a month, yeah, you go buddy. <laughs> Uh, you can kind of make any adjustments that you need uh, for your next block. Okay, if it's working, don't, you know, it's not broken, don't fix it, keep it going. Uh, and then once you kind of stall out, just maybe change it up a little bit with uh, those variables that we have mentioned. So that is kind of it with the bench press talk. Hopefully you learned something, hopefully I helped you. Like I said, try to take something pretty complicated, make it pretty simple so you guys could try it out with your bench press. But we are gonna head back on over to the office so I can close out this video. Let's go. Alrighty, my friends, so there you have it. Quick breakdown on the bench press. I put out a lot of other videos before that hopefully I can help you with your bench press as well, which hopefully I've linked throughout this video and I'll put down in the description. 
I just got done doing, like I said previously, my hypertrophy program, which kind of takes all the thinking out of it. Uh, so if you guys are looking to have more volume and more frequency and trying to just pack on some solid muscle before you go into a strength program, I highly recommend it. It's very affordable. A lot of people have gotten great results. So if you want to support me in the channel, check it on out. If not, no big deal. You're fully capable of doing this stuff on your own. All right. So Hopefully that helps. Until then, it's a Lean Mean Strength Machine. We have the Press Clinic August 24th. Lots of collaborations coming up, which I am super stoked about. And I uh, just can't help uh, but thank you guys for your support of this channel. So until then, peace.